Welcome back to What RT Nibs. This is an Object 261, the Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Cliff and it's under the command of Heavy 999. Now, there's a reduced numbers game here. It's all Tier 10, but there's only 14 players either side. So let's see how they get on. Okay, they're off. Two marks on the barrel. It's an 18 centimeter barrel which was an odd choice for the Soviets to make because the yeah, normally they would actually have either the 203mm or the 152mm so 18cm was a bit out of the ordinary 908 uh, alpha and a burst radius of 10 meters. Now Heavy's aimed towards the Western Pass straight away anticipating somebody's going to come around that corner trying to get to the plateau and unfortunately he didn't spot that bat chat 25 ton making his way around that corner already they made a quick pass and oh an enemy has been spotted it's an is4 but from heavy's position right in the corner in k1 he can't get a shot on that guy just yet okay he's gonna try i think it's looping the shell up over the top, but I don't think he's got a shot on that one. Oh, by the uh, centre, we've got uh, three tanks he can hit. An Object 140 up on top, a T95 FB4201 down below, and a pattern. <clears throat> he makes a shot for the pattern, <clears throat> for the 140 rather. He fired as he moved because he was uh, trying to avoid counter battery. Okay, he's lining up the next shot. It's a fairly quick reload with the 18 centimeter. It's not quite as big, or therefore it's not quite as long as a 203 millimeter howitzer. He's lining the shot up. He just can't find a solution for that one, but he has got a solution on the pattern. So it looks like the pattern's going to be the next one. And it's a direct hit. He's staying in the corner, but he is relocating after each shot. Okay, we've got a... That's an FB215B. That's a Tier 10 British heavy tank. One of the parts, uh, one of the tanks that is in the collector's tab. It was taken out of the game quite, quite some time ago. But you can now get it for bombs, and it's actually quite a decent tank. Rounds out. Lands on the rock face. Not quite as much damage as he hoped, but... This time round he's going for the IS-7. I have mentioned before that it's actually quite a good idea to hit as many enemy tanks as you can during a game to increase the chance of getting a confederate. 182 hit points off that guy, but it's another tank that he's hit. There's the FB215B. He only stunned him the last time, so I think he wants to actually get some proper damage on him now. Almost finished reload. Rounds out. This looks good. And he's almost out of health now, that FB215B. It must, be, it must have been that he was the one taking most of the hits from the enemy. Normally, it's the FE215B is quite a solid tank when played by the right people. Very difficult to knock out, but it looks like on this occasion he's been receiving end of quite a lot of fire from a Super Conk and an E100. And that shot kills him! So he's got his first kill. Okay, over here we've got a Wizzy1321 who's kind of a little way too far forward. And it looks to me like he's now trying to retreat because he realises the amount of danger he's in. Yeah, he's desperately trying to get out and it's too late because he left it too late. The Type 5 just nuked him. And he's out of the game. The IS-7 is trying to pull back. He's turning round. And, whoa, nice bit of stun assist off the IS-7. So... Now lining up a shot on the T95 FP4201 Chieftain. Works out where the guy's going. Lays the round in and it lands ahead of the path 
of that uh, chieftain. Change position again. There's an E100 in the Western Pass. Yep, he spotted it. Looks like the Bobject just had a go at him. Now, the E100 has been recently buffed. So it might be better performing, but it still gets uh, damaged by HE. And there's an IS-4 in that pass as well. And it now looks like we've lost our teammate in that pass. So this might work out okay for him being in the corner, because if those enemies actually take the high ground on the Western Plateau, they might be able to uh, shoot down at heavy 999 so he needs some cover really to avoid being shot at the enemy RT is also an object 261 so he might also be looking for heavy 999 there's that object 140 the first tank that he hit up on top of the cliff oh he's bouncing around all over the place yes I think he accidentally hit his cruise button and it mounted the rock yeah, so that didn't work. Missed the opportunity to get a quick shot in there. Rounds out. And the Manticore tries to get a shot at the Object 140 as well. But it was a good shot because it tracked the Object 140. And I think the Manticore is going in for the kill. If he can get a shot through the lower plate. The Object 140 was looking the other way and the Manticore finished him off. Now the Manticore is in a bit of danger now because there's that FB4005, the Heshbon, and there's an IS-4. And he damages the Heshbon just as he goes around the corner with a bit of splash. So he's certainly hit a lot of enemy tanks now. There's only five remaining. There's that E100 that we saw earlier, the one that was previously on the Western Pass. He's gone up onto the Donut now. Right, we've got a T110E5 on the donuts, whilst the Manticore is going after the Strip 103B, who's up on the Sniper's Nest. And that shell landed a bit short, but it still did some splash damage to the Strip. Just need to see if we can get another round in there. He knows where to put it. it looks like the Manticore is hiding. Oh! E100 is coming to sight again. He's trying to get shots on our T110E5, but that rock's in the way, so he can't get a shot there. I go back to the Striv, yes. The Striv's a much better target. It's a much more important target at this stage. Lines up the shot, fires the round in. He moves back and takes a much bigger hit this time. 330, and the Manticore's got below the Striv. So the only way the Striv can get him now is to come down from his high uh, perch. Because if he tries to uh, shoot down at the Manticore, he'll give him his lower plate and, well, the Manticore will take advantage of that. But unfortunately, it's four tanks versus four. And there's the E100. Rounds out a bit late, but it hits, uh, hits the side of the turret. Now, was, did the E100 see him? No, I don't think so, but he's hiding in amongst the rocks. The big worry, of course, is the E100 might actually take advantage and come down here. We've got our FB4005 up in the sniper's nest at uh, K5. So he might be able to interdict that. And he fires around at the E100 and quickly pulls out a sniper view. Obviously, we have told people in the past, don't do that. Because it actually denies us the opportunity to see what actually did happen with the shot. The Striv, it appears, has actually dropped down onto the next level. He's actually on the plateau above... Uh, or next to the cap area um, and the Manticore and the TBP are moving to try and get shots on him oh we lost the Manticore because he over he flipped himself he must have gone up against the rocks and so now it's three versus four and the round goes in it lands short on the strip which means the TBP's got a little more to do than I think he would like and the Striv's backing himself up against the corner of the map, but he doesn't do it very well. And the TVP can take advantage of this now. And he's put one in, one big one, and that's a kill shot there. But the IS-4 is looking at him. And uh, this opportunity, Heavy 999 fires one in. He does wound him, 
but he doesn't kill him. And the TVP, well, he looks like he's trying to escape and he's been wiped out. So it's now two versus three. This is getting very, very close. The IS-4 is very badly wounded, and so is the E-100. As far as I'm aware, the FD-4005 has suffered no damage whatsoever. So it might be a good idea for Heavy 999 to relocate from this corner, get the flock out of here, and move up onto the heights so that he can't be easily found. He can always fire back into the cap if he needs to, but if the... Um, if he stays where he is, the enemy knows where he is, and if the FB4005 can't protect him, he will get killed. Remember, there's still an enemy RT in the game, and he can't get a shot on that guy, but the FB4005 heshes him, and that's the end of the IS-4. So now it's three versus three, and the enemy RTs come in, come out of sniper view. Oh, he's trying to aim in, uh, in uh, overhead. He fires it in, he gets a big hit. But the object knows now that all he has to do is drive right up to the side and fire into the side. And well, he did get a big hit, but it didn't kill him. But the E100 did. So the E100 was able to get a shot on him. But so was the Heshpon. He got a shot as well. And that means it's all down to the last two. The Heshpon and E100. Now... I rather think that the Heshbon is 100... Oh, he's not 100% health. You can see there's half his health. And the E100, well, he is a one-shot for the Hesh round on the FB4005, if he can get that shot to count. Remember, the armor on the E100 is particularly strong, and it has been buffed. Wargaming recently buffed the E100, although Klaus Kellerman didn't uh, find it very buffed when he uh, played it recently. He found it distinctly unbuffed. So what will the E100 do? He could come up and go round the other side to have a go at the hedge barn. He's just backing up, looking forward, keeping his gun forward just in case. He's got one mark on the barrel, so he is an accomplished player. But I have the sneaking suspicion that he knows, and I know, that the E100 is not, repeat, not going to come around that corner because he knows what's facing him if he does. He doesn't want to hesh round in the face, so I think he's trying something sneaky. He won't try to cap. That would be absolutely silly at this level. Nobody would, uh, but a, an, a fool would do that. So instead, he's going to try something else. And I think he just wants to try and outposition the hash barn. He could move into such a place where he can't be seen and wait for the he for the hash barn to start looking for him and then ambush him. Oh, OK. Well, this is good because now the hash barn does have the advantage, but the E100 pulls back into cover before he can put the shot in it lets us know where he is had the two minute warning one minute 30 seconds now fb4005 disengaged enough so that the hedge barn doesn't know where he is he may still think he's up there It looked to me like the E100 was intending to relocate somewhere else so he could get a shot on the FB4005 from a position of cover. Normally what I would do is go round up the ramp on the other side and try and shoot across the gap. And that's the last minute. So it looks like he's anticipating this manoeuvre and he's now moving to a position where he can get a shot on the E100 if that's what he's actually trying to do. The E100 can't cap, there's not enough time to do that now, so he has to kill. Question is, where is he? Well, this is an interesting maneuver. He gets down. If the E100 is sitting on that corner, 
looking towards the hash bar and coming around that corner, he's about to get a nasty shock if he comes up behind him. Who's ready for it? Hello, Mr. E100. <laughs> he wasn't expecting that one. Very well played. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats and we'll see how this one played out. Well, ace tanker for heavy 999 in the object 261. He's had one before because he hasn't got the scrolls underneath. And he's also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. He managed to get 16. And he got a confederate medal because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And his win eight from that battle was 3,794. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he did get the highest damage on his team, but not the highest damage in the game. That was the uh, FB4201, uh, FB4201, who got uh, 4,927 hit points. But for no, some reason, he didn't get the high caliber. Maybe he accidentally shot at one of his own teammates or damaged one of his own teammates during the battle. So uh, uh, when it came to kills, it was the FB4205 who got the top, um, he got five kills in that game. Three kills went to the TVP, the T95 FE4201, the E100, and two kills went to the Heshbarn on the enemy team. I'm afraid Heavy only got one kill, but it didn't really matter because that increased his chances of getting the Confederate. When it came to base XP, yes, he was top of the table because he did so much in the way of stun assist. 1,012 base for him. He was the only player to get over 1,000 base. 918 for the Manticore, 904 for the Heshbarn. He fired 20 rounds, got 5 direct hits, no penetration but 21 splash. Damage of 3,570 hit points, of which 3,225 were at more than 300 metres. He received 2 hits, I'm afraid, yeah, 1 penetration. The splash hit was actually from the 261. And the penetration shot was from the E100. And he spotted one enemy vehicle, the Object 261. 10 enemy vehicles damaged, 1 killed, and 165 hit points of damage assistance. And this is the important one. That's why he's got the Ace Tanker. 4,099 hit points of stun assist of 20 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 80,712 credits. And after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables. And yeah, it's the consumables that caused him the problem because he actually ended up with a loss of 63,643 credits for the game. He got seven bonds for the battle and 1,518 XP times two for the first victory, 3,036 experience points altogether. And as he says, an ace and a close game. It was a very close game, but the Heshbarn did play it very, very well in day. Very cool. He did do the right thing. He didn't um, um, poke the corner to, to find out if the guy uh, was coming up onto the donut. And when he did spot the guy going around the corner, which is what I would have done tactically to, to get onto a different level, a different place, so you could ambush the Heshbon, uh, he actually took quite a um, dramatic and uh, unusual um, tactic of actually coming down the side of the cliff to catch the E100 as he was waiting on that corner to ambush him, which is, I think, was uh, a very smart move in do indeed. Very dangerous, but very smart. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.